You're listening to When Christians Speak Talk Radio, broadcasting out of the Washington, D.C. metropolitan area. Join us live every Thursday at 12 noon for Declaring the Finished Work with Pat Randall, a time of prayer and exhortation in the Word of God. Reverend Ray and his friends are here every Friday night at 7 p.m. for Friday Night Joy. And on Sundays, Reverend Ray and co-host Valerie Miller will be here for Bread of Life at 5 p.m. That's Bread of Life at 5 p.m. every Sunday. Ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. All of our shows are currently being aired on blogtalkradio.com, iheartradio.com, and spreaker.com. You can download our podcast from these sites, or you can go to itunes.com, blueberry.com, and zoom.com. Be sure to check out our website at www. WhenChristianSpeak.com That's www.WhenChristianSpeak.com Or go to our Facebook page When Christians Speak Talk Radio and like us. Our newest Facebook page Christians Against Suicide and Depression This page was especially designed to give encouragement and hope to do Spiritual warfare exposing the lies and the deceptions of the enemy. Jesus came to bring life and life more abundantly. Now back to our show. Praise God, praise God. This is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice, and we shall be glad in it. Hallelujah. This is another episode of Declaring the Finished Work, and this is your host, Pat Randall. I am excited about this broadcast today. I know without a doubt that the Word of God will go through the airways with such power, life-changing power, and I am grateful to be a part of it. Today, I have a special guest with me that I will be introducing late in a moment here, Prophet Tori D. Edwards, and praise God, I'm so excited about all that God has poured into this woman of God to share with us today. Amen. So let's go before the throne room. Hallelujah. Glory to God in prayer. Father, we praise you. We glorify your name this morning. Well, this afternoon in this day, day that this is the day that you have made for us. We come into your courts with thanksgiving and with praise honoring you almighty god we thank you that not only are you mighty god but you are father you are abba father you are intimately acquainted with us we thank you this day for your dear son christ jesus hallelujah we thank you for the gift of salvation. We thank you that through him we have been made the righteousness of God, that we stand here no longer in condemnation, no longer in judgment, but we are free. The debt has been paid in full and actually above and beyond the full payment. So we thank you. I thank you, Holy Spirit. You have full authority during this broadcast to speak the word of God with power and with authority. We yield to your work and we give thanks. We thank you for being here, living on the inside of us, equipping us for this 
season. We were born for this time. So we thank you. We praise you. We thank you in advance, Father, for all that you're going to do during this broadcast. Our ears are attentive to your voice. Our hearts are open to receive everything that you give us in this day. And it's in Christ Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Glory to God. So if you're just joining me, this is Declaring the Finished Work. This is Pat Randall, your host. And today I have with me Prophet Tori D. Edwards. And I'm so excited. Uh, Not only is she a prophet, she's a preacher, she's a teacher, she's a spiritual coach, she's an author, she's an intercessor, God is really magnifying himself through her life, and I am grateful that she is taking time out, Um, and I know she has a busy schedule, but that she would take the time to come on the air and share with the listeners of When Christians Speak Talk Radio. I love her bio. She starts, this bio starts off saying that she proclaims little to no credit for her life's accomplishments and passion to pursue her destiny. Tori gives the production of her of her life all to God, who has directed her path through the trenches to the triumphs and victories. As a prophet and preacher, she is very passionate about bringing forth the truth of the gospel and has a love and determination to see men, women, teens, and children break through obstacles into victorious life. Tori is known as the agent of change and voice of victory for all who encounter her ministry and business. She is known to utilize practical and innovative technology to teach, train, and effectively empower and motivate her given audience. Tori is the CEO of multiple companies, one of them being speaking, Speak Life Coaching, Life Beyond Limits. And she, there's so much, and I'm going to let her tell you more about what God has been doing through her life, where God has brought her forth. And she's going to share on whatever God has given her for today, and I'm excited. So, Prophet Tori, you want to say hello and get started? Praise God. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me on today. I'm so excited about this show and honored. I just want to say thank you to both of you, Um for inviting me on for the invitation. I just I'm, I'm very grateful. I'm honored. I can already sense and discern and see the magnitude and the level of the anointing that is on this call and that is just with you all. Um so I'm just very thankful for that. I'm very thankful today. So um you know, once again, I appreciate you having me. Um I'll just start here. I thank you so much for reading that bio. It is a little bit lengthy. Um <laughs> and that's because a lot of times our stories are lengthy, you know. Um yes. there's a process that comes along and that goes um with what God has given us. And so I always believe uh, I I try to stop it sometimes, but I love the details of someone's testimony. I love the details and seeing how um they got from the bottom to um, the place of destination or the place of destiny or the place of victory. Um, and so that's where, that's where I've been. Um, I always say, and I believe this as it relates to my own life, is that um, you have to experience living. You have to experience what you go through to the fullest. And I mean from the storms. Um, from the trials, from the making, from the, you know, um, the training, definitely Mm -hmm. the training, and that, you know, even through my own life, it hasn't been an overnight process. Um, My story goes deep, and I'll be very quick with it so that we can get into the meat of what God has to say to all of the listeners on today and to speak into Mm -hmm. our lives. But, um, you know, I started out as a teenager that was very disturbed. Um, I started out as a 15-year-old teenager that had some very, very big dreams. And, you know, even back then, 
had a prophetic gift but did not know what it was called. I thought that there was something wrong with me. Um, my mm. foundation necessarily was I wasn't a, you know, I wasn't a PK. I did not grow up in the church like that. My mother reared us and took us to church in the earlier part of my years. But when you're that young, you don't quite understand. Um, you don't quite understand. All I knew was that I had a fear of the Lord. And from Amen. that, that is what carried me even out in my times in the street. Um, so that's where I come from. I come from a place. Uh, my mom kept us in a very great home. We had we we had what we needed, but I chose um, another direction because of just the pains and the hurts that I carried as a young girl. Um, my father died when I was 12 years old, um, and it was you know by uh, by tragedy. So I experienced mm-hmm. tragedy in my life and in my family a lot. We had a lot of death and a lot of tragedy, and that put, proceeded to place me in a in a very confused state, just going to school one day, you come home, and your parent is gone. And so that's what started my process of this downward spiral, um, and from drinking to drugs to um, so many other things, just parting the lifestyle. And I, I received my salvation later on in, in my, my 20s. And so that was where God really dealt with me. I I came up with a lot of my companies back then, really, my Mm -hmm. my company called Posh. It is for girls, teens, and women. It stands for poised, original, sophisticated, and honorable. And it's Mm -hmm. really geared towards taking back our girls, taking back our women, um, bringing them back to the place where they understand and know who they are, what they have on the inside of them, Mm -hmm. um, that you have a jewel. You are a jewel. You're priceless. Um, And a lot of times when, when you're priceless, you're hidden. And so you yes. go through such a rigorous process to become that diamond, to become that, that jewel that people see and know to admire. And so that's what Posh is. I started out with a cosmetics line, got into modeling, um, got into makeup artistry, and I did that for many years. But through that, I found myself um, really mentoring and motivating people. Um, as I got came into, you know, my salvation, I found myself praying for individuals, um, encountering women with cancer, people in, you know, distressful situations. Mm-hmm. And I found that Posh was not only a business um, that I would launch out with cosmetics and clothing and, you know, programs and an institute, an entrepreneurial and leadership academy, um, but also it would be a ministry. Um, and that we would be able to impart into the women what they really needed and help them come out of where I came out of. So God just revealed to me throughout that process, yes, um, that I had to, you know, I had keys. And the only reason why he, I had the keys was because I obtained the victory, because I overcame it. And I want to tell the listeners today that whatever you overcome, you have gained access and keys to that area. You have power in that area. You have an anointing in that area. So some people find it hard to find, you know, where I am, who am I, yes. those type of things. But you already have power with God. Um, and it's because you endured. It is because you, you, you obtained the beauty of the suffering with Christ. There's beauty. There's a, there's a making process that comes forth out of, out of you going through the dirt and out of you going through the hard things, the darkness. Um, out of darkness comes light. Um, the the Bible tells us that weeping may endure for a night, um, but joy comes in the morning. So it's a night season that we all go through. We have to go through it. Uh, Jesus had his night season, and he had his trials, and he had his tests. But the joy came in the morning through the fulfillment of the cross for what he was sent here to do. And so we have that same anointing. We have that same power. So Hallelujah. that was the beginning of my story. Yes, yes, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Praise him. Well, I'm, you know, I'm giving this whole time to you. So I'm just going to be sort of sitting back like a listener. Okay. So I'm going to keep going. I'm going to keep going. Keep going. going. Okay. So, you know, there's a lot to share because this is where I came into salvation in my 20s. It was the mid 20s. And God immediately began to deal with me. I was birthed out of prayer. And one thing about it is that 
you know, I, I I didn't know the terminologies. And I want to tell the listener today that even those that are in Christ or you've not yet accepted Christ yet as your, your Lord and your Savior, I want you to hear me today when I say this. Um, don't take that as a place that you say, well, I don't know anything about this life because I knew nothing. I didn't know what a prophet was. I just knew that I could see. I knew that I could hear. And, and, and it, it, it didn't have a name for me. It was just something that I knew happened to me. Um, mm-hmm. You know, I also knew that, um, you know, that, that there was more. And I, I want to tell the, these individuals, don't stop at just asking the question. Move forward and press toward getting the answer. Because God, if you ask him, I'm telling you, answers will come immediately. I knew nothing about what an intercessor was until someone came my way and they handed me a book and said, I don't know you from anybody, but the Lord told me to give this to you. Uh, my mother was a key and also a catalyst because you know, she walked with me through the beginning part of my salvation. She was a key. God used her. She would pray for me, and she would tell me, I, I can see it. I don't know why, but God has something really great that you're going to do. You have a really great work ahead of you. And now I understand, even as your mother, your personality growing up, your personality, why you were the way that you were. And so I tell parents and I tell husbands and wives, pay attention to your spouse, pay attention to your children. Um, Mm. Look at them from the standpoint of not who you physically have birthed them to be, but who God has sent them into this earth to be. Because if you can understand that early on in age, you can say, wow, I can understand. My daughter has that gumption. She has tenacity. She's a fighter. She's a warrior on purpose because God has born her to be. And when you cultivate that, you will have children at 14, 15, 12, 11, you know, praying and speaking and and doing the works and the will of God. You'll You'll have young evangelists. You'll have young prophets. You'll have them seasoned. You'll have children like Samuel's arising. You'll have have children like David's arising. You have you'll have young women like Esther's arising. And Amen. so uh, you, you, you'll have these individuals that are cultivated. Uh, so cultivate your children, cultivate your spouse. Um, do not become the enemy of that individual because you misunderstand who they are. You have to get in alignment with that because if so, it can bring a warfare between you and your child or between you and your spouse. So I say to you today, understand, ask God, show me. I know that this is divine and the Lord is speaking to somebody on today. Um, he's saying, you know, ask him, show me. He'll show you immediately. And say, Lord, I, I need it quickly uh, to remove the contention because that's where the enemy gets in between. He gets in between the relationships. And then it becomes that the child uh, resents the mother or the father because of, of, of you know, the anointing or because, you know, the, it, the mother or the father are saved and the child has not yet arrived into their place and it becomes a dividing. And that's where Amen. the word becomes true where Jesus said, you know, I came to bring a sword. If one is serving in the kingdom and one has given their life to Christ and the other has not, it brings a division naturally. Mm. And, and, and that's where we're seeing mother against daughter. That's father right. against son, spouse against spouse. So if you wanted to have answers, God is releasing the answers on today about the contention that is arising in the household and with the families. So back to my point was that my mother was a catalyst. And when I got saved, she was utilized to do certain things. And so were people that God would have to cross my path and say, you're an intercessor. And I would say, well, what is an intercessor? What is that? And then I begin to go home and research and dig and come to find out exactly what God had me doing was in, 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 in it was exactly um, the, as a prophetic intercessor. I could see while I was praying. I could hear while I was praying in picture form. I could see, and God would take me to places in the spirit and begin to reveal mysteries and things to me that were going on in the demonic realm so that I could Hallelujah. pray against it before it manifested. And so because of this, the devil learned who I was early. Uh, I know we've heard the term, does the devil know your name? And if Satan knows your name, you are a direct automatic target. You are a direct yes. automatic target in every area. So whomever or whatever that is around you, if they have an open door, 
open doors such as resentment, unforgiveness, bitter, fear, anger, any any of these things, jealousy, envy, they can become uh, a person that is used by Satan. How do we know? Uh, we can go to the word where Job and his wife um, uh, had a conversation. Now, mind you, Job says, you know, you have a hedge round about him. I cannot touch him. God says, okay, well, I'm going to remove the hedge, but you cannot kill him. And so one on the second round of uh, Job's testing, uh, God says, have you considered my servant Job, for he is a man of integrity. And now we see going to the, a, few cha- a few verses down where Job's wife uh, says something. That everything that happened in their family uh, hurt her. It, you have to understand lo- losing her children, all of their things. Now her, su- her husband looks like he's deadly ill. What is this yes. woman going to do? She becomes angry with God. You sacrifice to this God. You do this. You're so faithful. Why has this happened to our family? So she's angry. And so through the anger of his wife, Satan enters into her for the another mm. round of testing against Job. And how do we know so? He, Satan, says to Job, he says to him, you know, curse God and die. Have you no what? Integrity. And so the very thing that God praised him for, Satan says, I'm going to go, I'm going to go test him in that very area, and I'm going to use what's closest to him to tell him to make him curse you and come against uh. the integrity that God said he had. And so this is why I say we have to look beyond what it is that we see. Faith now is very, very critical to us, and it cannot be just uh, the mustard seed of faith. Our faith by now should, it have, should have grown. Why should it have grown? It is the trials and your tests that is watering your faith. And, and, and that's where we get to where we are now. You should have grown up in faith by now. This is where God has us as a people, and I'm going to transition as to why as I get into Ebola, ISIS, and as I talk about the book, Walk It Out. Uh, we should have grown in our faith because our testing has gotten more intense. Um, it's yes. not to the point where it's just training you, but now you're in the actual battle. Uh, you go through a level of training in boot camp and basic training in order to pre- prepare you for when you're sent out. And now because God is calling those uh, from the body of Christ and the fivefold ministry now to be sent out from all areas, the apostolic, the prophetic, the evangelistic, the pastoral, and the teachers, uh, they're now, it is time all now that we're fusing together as one to make up the real church. It'll no yes. longer be just the pastor functioning alone, but now you'll see the even functions of the apostolic connect with the prophetic, the prophetic connecting with the evangelistic, the evangelistic connecting with the pastoral, and the pastoral now with the teacher to make up the whole hand where God can move, the hand of God can move. And so that's where we are within the church. We're seeing the mighty hand of God moving. So this is where Walk It Out comes into play. We skipped over some things, but the Holy Spirit is telling (laughs) me that my life is already a, a display. The, the the details aren't aren't you know that 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 important. Uh, we get here now to where God is calling for us not to sell the oil or the anointing. Why am I saying that? Uh, there was a conversation between Jesus right before the fulfillment of the cross, where a particular thing had to happen. There had to be an anointing uh, related to him going to the cross. Uh, and this came not from his inner circle, but from the outer circle. Uh, what we mm-hmm. see is the woman with the alabaster box, she comes with this oil, and she presents it to Jesus. But then we have Judas standing by Jesus, uh, I, I believe covering him at some degree as a disciple, uh, while this woman comes to anoint him. And he says, no, 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 no. Judas says that that oil could be sold. It's, it's, it's expensive. And yes. Jesus says, no, you cannot sell this oil, because this oil is for me. And so this, what I'm saying here is in revelation to the people of God and the anointed, God's anointed. Now the oil can no longer be sold. The oil can no longer, where we're preaching and we're doing church in such a way to make money, it cannot be that it has to be solely for Christ. It has to be solely for the fulfillment of Christ and the ministry of the kingdom. And so this oil and this next anointing that is coming upon us before fulfillment, uh, this is that costly oil. So that's why many right now, you wonder what's going on in your life, but God says you're paying the price. 
I hear the Lord saying, you're paying the price and the cost of the oil that I placed upon your life. Don't think that you're going to be effective without paying a price. Don't think that you're going to be effective and do things in this earth on my behalf without paying the cost associated. So, yes, you're going to be persecuted. Yes, the storms are going to intensify. Yes, people are going to walk away from you. Yes, people are going to betray you and deceive, try to deceive you. Yes, mm-hmm. it's going to feel like it's happening all at one time. It's going to feel like marriage is broken and destroying. It's going to feel like people are leaving you that, that said they were with you. It's going to feel like, yes, the world is talking about you and, and, and all of your business. Uh, it's going to feel like your children and your household is in an uproar. But the Lord says it's because of this costly anointing that I'm placing upon you. You just have to endure it. And so that is the word of the Lord today as it relates to you all. Uh, I believe now, and I can feel the pull from the line and the pull from the listeners on this call, um, and even out into the atmosphere, yes. um, really aligning and shaking the church. Uh, we, we, are now have to, we now have to attack before we are attacked. Uh, the strategies, yes. we have to be more tactical about what we're doing. One of my favorite sports is boxing. And with boxing, I love it because I don't know why it just deals with uh, contending. Uh, you, you have an opponent. And let me tell you what I love the most about boxing is that you're not surprised by who you're coming to get into the ring with. We're not surprised that we're getting into the ring with Satan. We know that he's Satan. We know he's the devil. We know he's the accuser of the brethren. We know he's the adversary. So we know that we're getting in the ring with someone uh, that, that, that is in opposition to us. You can study your opponent before you get in the ring in a boxing match. I said, that's a win-win, especially for someone or for the people of God or someone like me, because at least I get to study you. I know when to shift to the left. I know when to go to the right. I know how to position my feet. I know how you jab. I know what your strong points are. I've been able to study you and learn your weaknesses. And this is how we must, we must, we must see Satan during this time. We must see the demonic kingdom as that adversary that we get into the ring with that now we're able to study. He can no longer longer position himself to study us, learn our ways, counterfeit, mock, and mimic us, and and, and, and attack us, Just and and we're not ready. We're not prepared. So that cannot happen anymore. So I say to you, people of God, you must contend. You must contend, and you need to start studying your opponent. You need to open up that Bible and look how he operated and maneuvered in the garden. Look how he operated and maneuvered with Pharaoh and, and with the children of Israel to stop them and to keep them in bondage and not allow them to get their freedom, not allow them to get the inheritance and the promises of God. That's the Bible right. tells us that your promises are yes and amen. So the Lord has already said it. You have the guarantee. What are you waiting for? Lord. And that's what the Lord is saying to us. What are you waiting on? The Lord keeps saying, oh, we'll be waiting on God, waiting on God. But the Lord says, I'm using you. And so Jesus could not stand in one position saying, oh, the father wanted me to come here and fulfill this. But he stayed up under his mother in house, uh, his mother and father's roof. He had to get out. He had to move. There must be action to create a reaction. And so now what the earth needs and the world needs is the reaction, the action and the reaction of the the church of the body of Christ. I'm saying something yes. here, and the Lord yes. is speaking to us, and I declare that as uh, this message is going through the airways, that it is literally suffocating the prince of the power of the air. Thank you, Lord. So Thank, you, no Lord. Thank you, Lord. You can no longer operate in your you, atmosphere, Lord. downloading you, and speaking and terrorizing and uh, throwing you off, distracting you. So I Thank move you, Lord. those things out of the way right now. So you're going to see a lot of things cease after today, because Thank God you, is Lord. shutting it up. He's stopping it so that you can have a clear mind, get yourself together, and contend and fight with the adversary as we need to. So into the book, Walk It Out. Um, this is, book was written, it is called Walk It Out, Navigating Your Divine Calling. And with this, this book started to be written in 2008, if you can believe it. Everything wow. in my life uh, seemed to had to try to stop this book. It seemed like attack after attack, major thing after major thing. See, one thing, we've always uh, watched where, uh, know that the enemy loves to come in different ways. But if he cannot come from the outside, he'll come from the inside. He'll yes. send a counterfeit to well. you. He'll 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 send all types of things uh, to throw your life in a course 
that it was not designed to go. But I declare today for every listener that that is happening to you or has happened, that God, the Spirit of the Lord, has now rerouted you, and you are now set back on course. I declare today divine alignment with the course. And the will of God that he has set for you, every demon, demonic spirit, demonic kingdom, even that has risen up against you, your household, you as the anointed one, you as the one that God has chosen for this time and this season, that now immediately all things will fall back into alignment in the mighty name of Jesus. You're going to see it happen. So I declare alignment come forth in Jesus' name. So with this book, Walk It Out, Navigating Your Divine Calling, God had given this book to me, and he said, the process that I've taken you through, I want you to now release it to my church. I want you to release it to every person that you can get this into their hands. He said, Mm -hmm. because I've actually finished and completed your course, and you have walked with me, and many need to know the details of walking with me and how I can navigate their path, how I can navigate their destiny. He said uh, there were a few things, keys in this book, a lot of keys. There are a lot of keys. There are a lot of revelation, a lot of access in this book. Um, Throughout this book, there are revelatory things, but the first volume comes a little bit foundational, basic. And I say even in this book to the church and to the fivefold ministry, we have to be careful thinking that we're so high up and are so educated that we can (laughs) take the basic principles and the simplicity of the Word of God and go back to it and regain and refuel. That's why Mm -hmm. we see many fallen leaders right now because not just sin, we say, oh, they sin, they sin, but they did not have that reinforcement uh, support and so many other things that is necessary to maintain. Uh, There is a time of weakness that comes upon every leader. We saw it with Moses as he was leading in the midst of leading, in the midst of the Red Sea. But That's his right. arms became weakened, and he needed the reinforcement. He needed the upholding of his arms. And it was basic what they did. It wasn't anything profound. They didn't get down in the midst of the Red Sea and do all of these, you know, profound, you know, big things. They just went and held his arms up. They came Glory and became God. strength for him. And so this is what the leaders needed. So I said, don't bypass this book because you feel like I'm talking about something that may be for the baby Christian or the new believer or the person that is seeking for something that you feel like you surpassed. The Lord said, go back. And so we're going back to the foundation in this first volume. There is a second volume that's already finished, um, waiting to be released in the next month or so. But in this, um, God literally walks you hands-on. We thank God for the body of Christ and our churches, our pastors. I salute you, pastor. I salute you, bishop. I salute you, apostle, prophet, evangelist, uh, pastor, teacher, all of you from the fivefold ministry, and even, um, you know, those that are, you know, the parishioners and those of you that, you know, are the members. I salute you all. Um, And I say that because it takes a lot to do the work of the kingdom, not just the work of the ministry. The Lord wants us to change our language, but do the work of the kingdom of God. Um, It takes a lot. And so in saying that, you know, we must uh, we must be able to digest, digest. Uh, 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 this this word that is coming forth, even through this book, that is simplistic. Amen. Simplistic. Amen. I, yeah. I just want to stop right here one moment and just say I started reading the book, and I was blessed from the the beginning pages of the book. And you told a story about this Austrian who was a space jumper. Mm-hmm. And and I hope you I, I'd like for you to share a little bit of that story. But there was a statement that you made uh and that I just used recently in a um an email that I send out to um to listeners. And and the statement you made in your book it says we all must see how small we are and be humble enough to remove ourselves and realize we want to live beyond our own limits. Mm. Wow. I thought that was I thought that was so so profound because as you as you grow in the Lord you should 
be becoming smaller and he should be increasing in your life that he just consumes your life. Christ is yeah. your life. So t- t- tell me, a, you share that just that little bit um, from, from, from that, and then you could just keep moving whichever okay. way. I just okay. thought that was just so, so, so good. I love it. Um, it is the story of um, Felix Baumgartner. And this story um, was written by the Business Insider article. Um, he was he was a, um, a, a, a space jumper, as you said. Um, he was breaking a world record, um, and he was jumping like 2,005, I guess, over 120,000 feet, okay, mm-hmm. above the New yes. Mexican desert. Um, so I'm telling you, it was just really, it was something miraculous. But his statement is what stood out to me the most because he had people from all over watching this live on YouTube. I mean, he looked, you, you could barely even focus on him. He just looked like a little small black piece of, like a piece of salt, a grain of salt from, mm. you know, the natural view. So this is how high he was jumping. But this was his quote. He says, when I was standing there on top of the world, you become so humble, you don't think about breaking records anymore. You don't think about gaining scientific data. The only thing that you want is to come back alive. He said you don't want to die in front of your parents, your girlfriend, and all of these people watching this. So he said that, you know, at, do, about to do a 24-mile plunge. Uh, he, he broke a record. He broke a record doing that. And just looking at that, you know, I wrote a statement in the book, and I'll read it. Um, I said, walk it out, readers, just as this man, Baumgartner, broke two other world records and exceeded millions of people's expectations. At the end of it all, he didn't want to die before his parents, girlfriend, and millions of watchers. Uh, What would you believe separates you from this man, Baumgartner? Did God create him with something different, or are we made with the same power and capability to defy the odds against us in this world? Although you may not find yourself in mid-space prepared to plunge to break world records, your ability and creator, God, made you to fulfill something great and extraordinary that will demonstrate your unique qualities, break and destroy world boundaries that will be recorded in the heavens and the earth. Um, And I just said this same world-breaking power is inside of you. No matter what you accomplish, you don't want to fail before those who are watching your life as you break records, barriers, boundaries, and extraordinary limits. Um, Baumgartner broke records, but the most empowering thing was not what he did, but the revelation that came from such an exploit and supernatural act. Baumgartner said, sometimes you have to go really high to see how small you are. And to me, that is that has to be our mentality. Uh, we refer to this as, you know, we're climbing a mountain. We're going up high. And I always use this as a parable or as an analogy um, that you can say we're mountain climbers. Mountain is really, really big. We're starting to climb, okay? You're, you've only taken a few, climb, you know, feet up, and you slip and fall, and you scrape something. That fall is it's not really going to hurt you, but you scrape something. It's like, whoa, ow, you know, I scraped myself. Then you start to climb again. You get back up and you get midway. And if you fall midway, you're not going to scrape something. This time, because of how high you went, you're going to break something. You climb again. You re- recuperate. You heal. You recover. I'm going somewhere with this. You begin mm-hmm. to climb again and said, I'm not going to stop climbing. I'm going to get to the top of this mountain. And you climb, you get really high. The detriments of falling from a mountaintop is deadly. And that's how it is with our relationship with God. It is almost in the same that when each level that you go to, in the beginning of your walk, you could have done certain things. You could have continued to tap certain places, be a little bit in, sin a little bit there, scrape yourself. Okay, you didn't die. You didn't hurt yourself. You start back again on your walk with Christ. You climb some more, seeking, pursuing him. You get midway. You fall again into whatever it is is your issue. You break something. Now there needs to be a little bit more time for restoration after that act or after that deed or after that situation. Get yourself together. God recovers you. You get back in alignment again. 
now you go further than you ever have before. It gets to a certain place in your walk with Christ and your walk with God that as you get high up, if you fall in the same manner as you did when you were at the bottom, it is death. (laughs) Yes. Yes. And so I say it more so not a physical standpoint, but a spiritual standpoint that some people, and that's how we see it even with leaders and those that are in position and place. That's why it is very important that we deal with these issues at the beginning in the foundation parts of our walk. Right now, get your deliverance. Not that our deliverance is not meaningful when we get into leadership. It is, but it's to a whole nother level. You maintain your deliverance. You you mm-hmm. fast. You pray. You're, you you kind of pull away for a season. You know, you maintain your deliverance versus, you know, getting it and, 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 and you know, having things removed out of you um, initially. So, um, yes, that is such a profound statement. And I believe that God has shown us and revealed to us we have that same power that Christ had. Um, the same ability as we saw a natural human being on this earth that did not say a word about Christ, but did something so profound that broke a record. It broke a record, and it was his revelation that he got from so high up that made his life so so profound. It made it so awesome and amazing. Mm. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. You know, I want to stop and take a moment. Would you pray for those who are listening? Um, Sometimes, and what I sense is that, um, you know, we have been out in the world so long that we haven't really pulled out. And sometimes there is a resistance Mm -hmm. when the pure word of God comes forth. And there has to be um, like a a stronghold broken or Mm -hmm. a blindness lifted so that you can see things as they really are. Because, you know, um, too many of us live with one foot in the world and then one foot in the kingdom, which leaves us actually uh, powerless. It renders us powerless because we're in actually in neither place. We're just kind of half in this and half in, in, in that. But um, so I want to you to pray and to speak to that resistance. That mm-hmm. that 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 I'm sensing in the spirit realm, and also people who are so fixed in what they believe that God cannot continue to speak to them and expand expand how they see Him and and who He really is and who we are in Him. So if you would pray, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So, God, even now, Lord God, we declare upon every listener, God, today, and every person that even may hear this recording, oh, God, that now you're beginning to open up, Lord God, Mm -hmm. there is sight and their insight, God. Lord God, we declare, Father God, the spiritual blindness now be lifted off the eyes of your people, that they may see you. Lord God, I thank you now that you're placing the hunger and the thirst, God, after righteousness on the inside of their belly. I declare now that out of your belly shall flow rivers of living water. We declare life now to begin to work against the spirit of death. We declare now upon, Lord God, the the people of God and those that are listening and hearing, Lord God, where you said, taste and see that the Lord is good. We thank you today, God, that they will now have an encounter and experience. Let there be a wrestle no more. Lord, Mm. we break and destroy, God, in the name of Jesus, the adversary. We we break and destroy the spirit of darkness off of the mind that is causing illumination, God, that is causing desensitization 
that is causing distraction, that is mm. causing, Lord God, familiar oh, spirits to enter in. We thank you now today that by the superior blood of Jesus, Satan, it is the blood that is against you. We call every individual back out of the darkness today thank into you, the Jesus. light of Christ. We open up the, the gates of captivity and loose every individual that is held bound by the thank adversary, you, by, their ta- by their past, oh God, by past situations, addictness, sickness, infirmity anger, rage, resentment. We loose it today in the name of Jesus, and we declare liberty and freedom upon the people of God, the church, the body of Christ. Every listener today, Satan the Lord rebuke you from his people today. We cut and sever every tentacle and tie of the past. We break and destroy every generational curse off of your people, God. We thank Thank you, you, Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, the liberty and freedom has now come upon them. We declare, Father God, that victory is released today. Now let victory be proclaimed in every atmosphere from the north, the south, the east, and the west. Lord, let there be a wrestle no more. Choose ye this day whom ye shall serve. I bring every individual that is a listener on the side that makes them a sheep. We separate them from the goats today in the name of Jesus. We thank you, God, that we are choosing and have chosen the narrow path that leads unto life, and we turn our backs to the broad path that leads to destruction. We declare today, Father God, that we are being led by you. I declare over their feet, over their mind, spirit, and body, that the steps of righteous men, they are ordered by the Lord. Make every crooked place straight, God. Let them wrestle no more. We loose and break, Father God, the stronghold associated with the past, and we propel them and catapult them in the spirit into Glory. divine alignment with you. Open Glory. up and lock now, Korraba Shaya. Open up ah. now the ear, God, in the name of Jesus. Let them now hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. You, Open Jesus. up, God, and loose, God, the ear of the church, that now they may hear what the Spirit of the Lord God is saying. Let thank alignment you, take place, God, and let your spirit flow. We thank you now in Jesus' name that the people of God, I prophetically declare upon them now that the wrestle is over, that the struggle mm is over in the inside from the inside out that they have endured the wheel of the potter and you have made them now today yet again into another vessel that seemed good for you to make it we declare it so we seal it by the word of the lord and we prophetically pronounce it done be it so unto them in jesus name hallelujah Mm, glory to god glory to god hallelujah Hallelujah, so, um, hallelujah. Even if I may transition to begin to release before our time is up on today, um, yes. because the Lord has really desired those to hear. Now that your ears are open, and now that there is nothing blocking you from hearing the word of the Lord any longer, and I don't care where you're from, what degree we have, we thank God for the education, but God is surpassing the knowledge of men, the wisdom of men, and now it is more so into divine wisdom and mm. divine knowledge. It is going to be the mysteries of the kingdom that are now going to be released that is going to usher and walk the people of God through. Um, The Lord began to speak to me as it related to Ebola and ISIS. We're seeing a turn. uh, the, The people use this thing called turn up, but I want to say it in a different way because mm-hmm. I only see it as re- a result of overturning and overthrowing um, of, of, of demonic kingdoms and, and judgment being fulfilled and, and things that must come to pass, as Christ told us. He told me today to remind the people of God of what Jesus said in Matthew, the 24th chapter. I'm going to give you some word that you can go back and begin to read for yourself. God says he wants us now to walk in our maturity. All right? Walk in your maturity. You must. You must. This is not the time to act as if we do not see, and now is not the time to act as if you do not know, Um, because now the time of accountability, God is going to call you at the table. Uh, We speak on 23rd Psalm of the table that is being prepared, but when you sit at the table, there's something that happens. And there's an an anointing that is released at the table. So he's going to call you to a place of accountability while you're at that table. Uh, The Bible tells us that when we're at the table, that the enemy is present. He says, I'll prepare us a table. Prepare us, prepare us. He's preparing the table in the presence of the enemy. 
All right. Yes. So you, we have to understand that right now the Lord is saying, and I'm releasing now prophetically to the body of Christ and to the nation and to the listeners today, that there is now a table being prepared for the saints and the people of God, and we're going to align it with the word. Uh, okay. In Matthew 24, Jesus begins to talk about the destruction of the temple and the signs, signs of the end time. In this scripture, the Lord began to reveal to me, revelation-wise, that right now the New Age church and this type type of church, this prototype of the church that we see functioning now that has not really delivered the people, healed the people, and really sent out the people into the Great Commission as they should, is about to be destroyed. Uh, It was the destruction of the temple that Jesus was talking about in the signs of the time. And the Bible reads where he says Jesus left the temple and was walking away with his disciples when his disciples came up to him to call his attention to his buildings. He said, do you see all these things? And this is what the Lord is asking. Now he has your attention. Do you see all these things, he asked? Truly, I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Everyone will be thrown down. And so he's saying that now that type of church, that physical prototype of church that people have been engaging in uh, from more so uh, an emotional standpoint, an emotional state, uh, membership state, uh, to, to be seen, notoriety, that prototype of church is about to be thrown, overthrown and thrown down. It will exist no more. Amen. And as Jesus was sitting on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately. Tell us, they said, when will this happen and what will be the sign of your coming and of the end of the age, Jesus answered, watch out, listen, hmm. key words, watch out that no one deceives you. So what God is saying to us now is that he is calling for the watchman on the wall and the yes. gatekeeper to arise. The watchman hmm. on the wall, and I'll say this very, very quickly for the sake of educating the church and the listeners today. The watchman has a particular position that is different than a prayer warrior, intercessor, um, uh, uh, in any other magnitude or any other way. The watchman is normally a prophet. So it is time for the watchmen now to get upon their watchtowers. Uh, what happens in that watchtower, if you can imagine and let your, your mind take you to uh, the kingdom or a palace, there's normally a walled tower that goes higher above the kingdom and, 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 and the palace itself. And on yes. the, in that watchtower, there's one man that stands, and he begins to see afar off what is coming. Mm. <laughs> and Glory. he's able to alarm the kingdom and those within the palace. Uh, here's, here comes someone, here comes danger, I see an army, there's a great attack coming, and he sounds the trumpet and he sounds the alarm to those that are in the palace. He works in unison with the gatekeeper. The gatekeepers are our pastors, those gatekeepers, those that are of influence within our cities, our apostles. Um, those are our gatekeepers in our cities and in our states and in our countries. There are some that have different positions in rank and in order. So it is either you're from the standpoint of a city, a, the entire state, and then the, the country uh, yes. the, to which you reside. And so those three levels and those three tiers are now being set up. God is setting those up. Now I'm releasing some very profound prophetic revelations I need the church to hear today. And so from this point, he's going to now call the watchman to his post and to stand. You cannot be distracted by this stuff. These things aren't really moving us. I'm not moved by Ebola. I'm not moved by ISIS. Uh, The church should not be moved, and I'm going to tell you why. And so now he says, watch out that no one deceives you, for many will come in my name claiming I am the Messiah and and will deceive many. You will hear wars and rumors of wars. Okay, tell me what we see now. But see to it that you are not alarmed. These are Jesus' words to us ahead of time for now, for such a time as this. Glory. He says, but see to it that you are not alarmed. So church, calm down. Such things must happen. But the end is still to come. Nation will rise against nation and kingdom against 
kingdom. There will be famines and earthquakes in various places. So he says kingdom against kingdom. What is he saying? It's going to be the kingdom of God, the kingdom of heaven, against the kingdom of darkness and the kingdom of principalities, rulers, powers, and the darkness of of this world. So it's going to be an all-out wreck. It's going to be an all-out demonstration battle in the spirit. But in order for this to come, in order for this to happen, and what will happen is that turmoil must arise. Uh, there must be mm. the shaking of the nation. That's it right. must be the earthquakes. It must be the famines. It must be the sickness and the, the, the disease. He says all these are the beginning of birth pain. So say the earth is responding. The earth is birthing. The earth is crying out loud because of the pains of the birth. It's like the contractions. And we've yes. been hearing this for years, but the time was not yet as of then. It is now. It is now. Okay, and so the scripture goes on, I say, to please read on your own. But now the watchmen must arise. And so I call prophetically the watchmen to the towers. I call them from the north, the south, the east, and the west, every all 50 states. I declare that now watchmen, I put this out in the realm of the spirit, and I put out this clarion call. um, And I sound the trumpet and the alarm in the realm of the spirit through through the catalyst of this show today. For the watchmen, get upon your wall. Watchmen get in your tower. Watchmen get in your place. Watchmen don't be deceived. Watchmen you, be Jesus. focused. Watchmen see. Watchmen hear. Watchmen listen. Lord. Watchmen release. So I declare that today in the name of Jesus. So now in the, watch, name. the watchmen get upon their towers. We're about to see a shift and a change. So the Lord began to deal with me about the people of God. Now here comes your word and your promise. The Lord began to show me Egypt and Pharaoh. And he began to say that now a spirit of pharaohs, pharaohs have risen up. And now is the time that the people of God are about to come out. They're about to come out for the Lord is about to bring you out. And this is not, oh, your breakthrough is near type of message. It's bigger than a breakthrough. Okay, pass that along to your neighbor. Speak that and put your hands on your belly and say, my breakthrough and my real promise from God is near. It's the fulfillment of promise. The fulfillment of promise. The Lord began to tell Moses right before this time happened. He said, listen, all these things are about to come upon Egypt, the world system. It is about to be sickness, and I'm going to cause pestilence, and all these things are going to come upon them. He says in a particular scripture in the book of Exodus, and I tell you, read the entire book of Exodus in order to hear what God is saying, and he will cause you to align up. But right now I've been in Exodus 12. I've been in Exodus, the 15th chapter. And so that is those are the particular chapters you can go. But the Lord began to tell Moses, tell the people to prepare. He says, because I am about to bring them out. And he gives them instructions. Borrow from your neighbor. Do what you have to do. Get yourself prepared for this journey into the promise where I have called you to be able to come and worship me freely. And so now uh, God began to show me that right before um, Jesus, I'm going to shift between two different scriptures, between when Jesus was about to go to the cross for the, for the fulfillment, the fulfillment, there had to arise a level of betrayal. It had to arise an uproar against him. And so even those that were following began to turn against him. And they didn't follow anymore. And then the works that he did and, and all the, the healings and the growing out of limbs and the miracles and all those things, it began to seem like it was in an uproar because darkness was arising. Darkness was <laughs> rising to its all-time high so that when he got to the cross, he could overtake and fulfill it. The darkness had to come to complete fulfillment and it's to its full fruition before he, uh, uh, before he actually gave up the ghost and went. The Bible tells us how he descended before he ascended to overtake and overcome all manner of sickness and disease and to destroy uh, the work of darkness. So it had to arise in order for it to come upon him and to take it upon himself and fulfill it on the cross to be the last lamb, the last sacrifice that would be slain on behalf of the sins of the people. So understand that things are going to get worse before it gets better when fulfillment is near. Things yes. are always going to get worse before it gets better when fulfillment is near. Amen. And so the Lord is saying to the people of God, the Ebola, Ebola is nothing. The Lord had Moses do something very strategic that I'm going to do strategically over all of you, and that you need to pass on and begin to spread the word. The Lord says, spread this message and spread this prophetic word. I want you daily to begin to place 
the blood of Jesus over your doorpost. I mean from a literal sense to a spiritual sense. Take and anoint your homes from top to bottom. Anoint your children before leaving the house. Anoint yourself daily and just daily continue to strategically strategically place the blood of Jesus upon the doorpost because what happened was when sickness and death began to fall upon Egypt, it did what? It passed over. Yes. Yes. Over Israel. And it did not touch not one, not a child, not a woman, not a man, not leaders, not a priest, not one was touched by the sickness, by the death, by the disease. That is the prophetic word of the Lord. This is the spirit of the Lord speaking this to you today. And these are instructions. So I hear the Lord saying, follow the instructions. Pass the word on. Begin to send out text messages and begin to say the word of the Lord that was released by the prophet says to begin to strategically cover the bl- cover the doorposts and the homes with the blood and anoint daily and, and put it on Thank the doorposts and put it in the rooms and while your children are sleeping, anoint them and daily pray every morning. And as you do this, Jesus. it will pass over. And it will not touch you or anyone associated with you if you spread the message and bring them up Lord. under the covering of this prophetic anointing. Hallelujah. So I say today, uh, the Lord says this concerning Ebola. As Jesus said, he said, what? Do not be alarmed. Calm down. These things must happen. He said, but the end is still to come. So get ready. Because now you're about to see nation will rise against nation. And I tell you the truth, we are about to see a shift in our land. There is a level yes, and a measure of devastation. It is a natural uh, de- a point of devastation because the earth is responding. So yes. you're going to see some natural things arise. There's going to be devastation. This is the only thing that will cause us to be able to reach the world as we should. That's why the church must be ready to listen. It's the destruction of the natural walls that you see. The church hasn't seen it. Yes, the building may be there. He said, but this is the time where the church will arise. He says, every one of those stones will be thrown down. He says, because now it's time for the church the church to launch into this true form, which is now you, Christ living on the inside of you. I give you a command today in the spirit realm prophetically, as Jesus said, cast Glory. out demons, heal the sick, raise the dead, and I pronounce prophetically upon you that greater works than these you are going to be able to do because the world is going to need to see See the power yeah. of God. They're going to need to experience and encounter the works of God uh, uh, in their lives by you, by the hands of God's people. What they say, I bow down today. God is real. Jesus is Lord. It is going to be the demonstration now of the servants of God and the people of God Hallelujah. and the function of the fivefold. And as a going back to the initial mm. part of the call, the hand of God moving now upon the earth and, and, and through the spirit, through the people of God. So he says, don't be alarmed, but prophetically the Lord has declared this is the time of the fulfillment of his promise. The Lord says, take heed, begin to prepare yourself, and now the Lord your God is about to bring you out of captivity. The Lord is about to bring us out and set and position us in place even within the earth. Uh, uh, Glory. Even the signs of the times that are happening now and the people of God and the hand of God through demonstration, the apostolic, Jesus. prophetic, evangelistic, pastoral, and teacher's anointing will now come in full manifestation and full fruition. The fivefold ministry and the hand of God is upon this earth now Hallelujah. says the Spirit of the Lord. And, and so the Lord says, now you will see me bring you out. The Lord says that now it will not be by your own works for the Lord says now you will see that it has been my hand that has brought you out. The Lord says, now I will be with you in the night season. I will be with you up in a pillar of fire by night and a cloud by day. You will see my, 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 my spirit upon you uh, at all times of the day. For the Lord said, I will be with you. I will hasten my word concerning you, says the Lord. For now I begin the process for the time has begun and the, and the birthing pains have now begun. This is the beginning of the pains. And the Lord says, now my earth is responding And the Lord says, we are on time, says the Spirit of the Lord God. We are on time. Even with the signs of the times, we are on on time. And the Lord says, for we have discerned well. The Lord says, this season you will see many things happen, many devastations come forth. But the Lord says, this day I've caused them to pass over you, my people, and your homes. 
and your children and your generations to come. But the Lord says that my promises toward you, my people, says the spirit of the living God, are yes Thank and you. amen. But the Lord says now that as you even see the famines and the pestilence come, the Lord says that it shall not touch you. As the woman of God spoke, the Lord showed her 91st Psalm. The Lord says, I prophetically now declare upon the protection of my hands through the, through the word of 91st Psalm, Thank which you. is now building up your hedge of protection. Even now, the Lord says, Psalm 23 is now Thank building you. up your hedge of protection. Psalm 37 is now building up your hedge of protection that the enemy cannot and will not pierce Mm. these hedges of protection. Now I hear the Lord saying, I prophetically declare seraphim and cherubim to now Mm. stand at the gates of every city, to now stand upon the wall of every city. And the Lord says, for I will sit my seraphim and my cherubim now into your cities and into your state and even into this nation. Thank Even you. upon the kingdom of God that now is at hand. The Lord Hallelujah. says, I called my seraphim and my cherubim to put a level and a measure of protection that have shields and that have swords that the enemy cannot come in and will not be able to penetrate the walls of my kingdom, the walls you, of Jesus. your home, the walls of your churches, the walls of the ministry. In the name of Jesus, the Lord said in you will come. In the name of Jesus, the Lord said you will speak. In the name of Jesus, mm. the Lord says you will be sent. In the name of Jesus, the Lord said you will Fight. But now the Lord said, I'm a revealing and releasing strategies you, of Jesus. Nehemiah, that now you will be the fulfillment of prophecy. But the name means Nehemiah. The name Nehemiah means Yahweh comforts. And now the Lord said oh, so to every broken you, down and torn down city, every you, broken Jesus. down and torn down state. For I have sent now a Nehemiah's anointing and strategies oh, even oh, through she, prayer. Tolo. As Nehemiah prayed, so shall Thank you pray. You, now let the mantle of prayer be upon my people. I will release now the spirit prophetically of prayer, the mantle of prayer upon every listener, upon every home, upon every caller today. But now Thank you are covered as 91st Psalm has covered you now let it be a covering prophetically and dimensionally I declare mm. a prayer covering upon you I pull down dimensional prayer into your Dang. atmospheres now and I declare now that you will now be put as intercessors you're now mantled as prayer warriors Thank you, in Jesus. the mighty name of Jesus so the Lord says that the enemy mm will not pierce the edge of protection, for now there is a firewall, a bloodline of Jesus Christ, and a smoke screen that the enemy will not pierce these walls or these hedges. Thank but the Jesus. Lord says, I have given Jesus. it to you today. Blow the trumpets Jesus. in Zion. Sanctify the fast. Hallelujah. Call the solemn assembly. Gather the people and those that suck the breath and begin to anoint and begin to Thank prepare you, for the Lord your God is about Thank to you, bring Jesus. you out. The Lord says, now I'm about to bring my people into your, my mm. promise which I have promised you, as I promised Abraham, Isaac, and my son Jacob, so shall it be upon you. Even my prophet Moses, as he has led, I will now cause my leaders that are after my own heart to lead you into this place, says the Spirit of the living God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. We worship you, Lord. We worship you, Lord. We worship you. you, We praise you. We exalt your name. Hallelujah. You You are high and lifted up. Yes, God. God. Even more now, God. High and lifted up, Lord. Lord. Yes, Father. Even the greater. Even the greater. Even the greater. Even the greater. Bless your name, God. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. Bless your name. So what everyone has experienced on today um, is an example of what God has given to this ministry, which is Prayer National Global Ministries. Um, The people can go to prayernational.org. We are on an assignment of something God gave me about three years ago called Teach Me How to Pray. And he said, for I will send you out and I will be give you as a sign to my people that you are the sign of victory. My name means victorious, and if you spell it the way God spelled it, um, it is V-I-C-T-O-R-I-O-U-S. And he said, this is what we call you in the heavens. And he said that I have made you a sign to my people that wherever you go, if you step in that place, that you are their sign, that they have got retained and obtained the victory. And so he sent me on this assignment and um, made me available now to the church and to the kingdom um, to go and to teach the church and the body of Christ in the same manner that those that have been listening have experienced on today. And it is called Teach Me How to Pray. 
And um, so I come and I partner with pastors and I partner with the bishops and apostles and prophets and evangelists and those with ministries and organizations. And I come and I teach the people and we engage hands on and I preach and deliver the prophetic word of the Lord. However, he directs me and I literally proclaim victory into each place that I go. And so it is a supernatural appointment. It is a powerful appointment. Um, and so I am available for booking now. The Lord said, now I want you to open up and now make yourself available to my people for this is the time that I'm yes. going to send you out Thank to you. teach me how to pray. And Thank so you. that is what we have experienced today is somewhat just a small, and this is only a small nugget, what we've encountered today. Um, and into a greater magnitude um, when we are on site. And I come with a team, and um, we're all ready. We're ready and prepared. We've been Praise on the back side of the mountain for about seven years, going on our eighth year. And um, like I say to people, this does not happen overnight. God will not uh, fulfill the greatness in you overnight. So don't look for just a speedy anointing. Take the Take the pressure. Take take it, take it, I hear the Lord saying, just take it. It hurts, it's hard to endure, but I hear the Lord saying, then take it, because it was time that I had to lay on the floor naked before God, and I had to take it, and I had to take persecution. I had to take people abandoning me, walking away from me, hurting me, harming me, all types of things, and the story is long and vast um, from, from abuse and some more things, but the Lord is saying today that now he has brought us out in even what we have gained. The Lord is saying to you today, and this is for someone, even what you in, endured, uh, the, the enemy coming in and literally trying to rape you and, 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 and suffocate you and kill you and destroy you in the spirit of what God has given you. He is saying today, today, yes. that you have gained some access and information from the places that you have been. And the Lord says now he has made you like a secret weapon that the enemy never wanted you to get loose. He never wanted you to get free because now you carry inside information about that place <laughs> that you went Hallelujah. to in the demonic Glory. realm. I hear the yes. Lord saying, arise from your addiction, arise yes. from your old lifestyle, be it lesbianism, homosexuality, whatever it is you are engaging in, and be loose today. For the in Lord the says, now Jesus. you have some inside information to be used as an agent Glory. of change on my behalf, as a voice of victory on my behalf. Glory and the Lord says, now he will cause your tongue to be loose and your mm. testimony now to gain power in the lives of those that are still bound. So the Thank Lord says, as he said in the beginning of this call, I have given you keys and access and a measure of anointing, a costly Glory. anointing. I want you to Glory. say a costly anointing Glory. that has cost Glory. you for this Glory. magnitude of expensive oil that is upon your life. So the Lord says, speak, and I call, I call people out now. I call them out from the abyss, the regions of the pit, uh, in the name of Jesus, out of darkness, out of the habitations and the dwelling places of the demonic realm. I pull you out supernaturally. I place the light of Jesus Christ in every dark place, and I renew your mind in the mighty name of Jesus. Let your mind now be renewed. I declare now that you have the mind of Christ. I declare now that you will not any longer be conformed to the world, but you will be transformed this day, today, by the renewing of your mind today, October 16th at 1.11 p.m., you have now obtained a new spiritual birth date in the realm of the spirit. So God says, arise, be born again. You've been created again yet into another vessel. We pull off the old wine, the old wine skins, and we, we place you now new wine skins upon you, new garments that say holiness and righteousness today. So we just Hallelujah. thank God for that. Bless we the name thank God for that. Bless the name of the Lord. I I want to tell you listeners that all the the information about my sister Tori here uh, um we're going to place it out on our website. So after the broadcast um give us a little time, but we're going to post all that information. Uh, I think we may have some up already. But all of her her Facebook links and and all of that we have and it's going to be uh, available on our website. And praise God. And I know that doors, doors even right now are opening for you, Prophet, to go forth and deliver the word that God is speaking to you during this season. 
the the power and the anointing on your tongue that is it's like a two edged sword and it's dividing asunder when you speak and we we need that. And so I just I thank God. I, I really thank God for you coming on the air today and we still have like about fifteen minutes left and whatever is still left that you want to speak right now, uh please go forth. So today I just declare healing now. Um, upon you and your homes, your household. Uh, Fear is now leaving the people of God. Uh, The children of Israel were afraid to come out. They had been in bondage so long in their minds and had had been through such rigorous work. I even hear the Lord saying and seeing that the labor and the work that had been rigorous for the church and the people of God is now loosing, that now, The voice of the Lord and the word of the Lord that has come forth on today has now uh, begun to remove uh, all, all, all bondage, all. And I see just so many different areas of bondage because I want you to know this, people of God, bondage has areas. It has different functions. It has different levels. um, It has different places to which it resides. And so, with this Teach Me How to Pray and what Prayer National Global Ministries is doing even through prayer, we are engaging these areas of bondage. We are engaging the kingdom of darkness, but we need help. We need the church to arise. Let me tell you this. There's some people that said, God, who am I? And this is what it is that is given to you in the book. It, walk it out navigating your divine calling is surpassing purpose into destiny. The Lord revealed to me that many people got play, got stuck at the place of pr- purpose. What is my mm. purpose? What is my purpose? Purpose, purpose, purpose. And got mm-hmm. stuck there and was never able to move forward and go to the next dimension into mm-hmm. destiny. Destiny is dimensional. Destiny is dimensional. Destiny is nothing that you can bring forth on your own by your own means. We can go take as many classes as we want to. We can do all of the works that we want to do. But destiny is a, the hand of God that, that navigates us into a place in him where we walk with him, where we walk with him. Because in this last day, it is going to be the where the church and the body of Christ must walk with God. There's going to be information supernaturally that will be released to the people of God, that we must all be in in unity to hear that so that where he says to go, we go, because the place to which we seem, and this is not, this is not gloom and doom, but there is about to be a level of warfare that's going to arise on the, our own soil in America. And God is going to send us to different places to where it will be of a hiding place, a place of refuge for the people of God, but it will also be such a place of just great uh, uh, overflow of, of of what he has given us of promise and favor and we will see God and experience him in ways he's been yearning to take care of us let me say this he's been yearning to take care of us so now he's going to yeah. remove man out of the way he's going to remove us out of the way of ourselves yeah. so that he can take care of us and so that we can experience him with a love that he's desire, been desiring from us like none other Glory you will God. love God. You think you love him now. You have not <laughs> loved him, and you have not <laughs> thirsted and hungered for him and Hallelujah. blessed him and worshipped out Hallelujah. of spirit and in truth for him like you will Hallelujah. in times to come. And so now the true worshipers are arising, uh, praise yes. uh, of the Lord is arising to such a purity, and, and we're going to stand and take a charge in the church uh, in such a way that we're going to begin to heal those that have the infirmity and the, the, the sickness uh, of, 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 of uh, and I'm going to just say it, of, of what we've seen perverting our worship, which is the lesbianism and the homosexuality, mm-hmm. the lifestyle associated with it. We are going to yes. be able to offer the help and in the process to walking them out of these places because um, it is possible Lord, if they yeah. want it. If not, then they be turned over to themselves, um, as yes. the Lord says in Romans 1, that it should be. 
Um, but God is so gracious and merciful that he wants to help them in their understanding. Yes. He wants to deal yes. with the mind and whatever was that what took place in their lives uh, um, before birth and even birthing into this world, into sin and, and the things yeah. of time past and the violations even. So we're here to heal. And so now there's, there is a real balm in Gilead, um, and it is coming from the people of God. And it is coming from the spread, the presence and the spirit of the Lord. He is our healer. He is our deliverer, our mender. And so today on this call, he's reminding you. He is uh, empowering you. He is uh, activating you. There's an activating happening on this call. Um, Thank you, Jesus. He has called me to come forth and activate motion in the church and in the body of Christ. That way Thank now... You. We will have a divine strategy. I've come to pastors to release prophetically and be a arm to hold up the arm uh, where you're getting a little bit weak. It's okay. It's okay to be weak. When weakness comes, strength arises. So you cannot Hallelujah. allow your strength to arise if you do not become weak. So let be weak. Be weak, I hear the Lord saying. Be weak. Mm-hmm. Let your weakness Glory. be made known and say, uh, removing the spirit of pride, because pride comes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. And so That's it's okay right. to say, yes, we want to call you in. It's okay to say I, we need special forces. Even the United States functions that way, where we bring in special forces and special ops and units and people. The fivefold ministry, that's what it's for. I need an evangelist. I, I need a prophet of God Glory. to come in. Glory. And so now Glory. they're saying, okay, well, the true prophets have come in and run amok in the body of Christ. Okay, let's, let's make this clear before we get off the line today. How can you identify the false prophet? Number one, the word never comes to pass. Uh, uh, number two, uh, just like today, you will have an encounter with God. It will be confirmation. He will release instruction. Uh, the way that they've been doing manipulating in the witchcraft and the spirit of Baal that has come forth through the manipulating of the monies and, and things like that uh, is, is coming to an end. God will demonstrate. Uh, it reminds me, and I want you to take note of this, people of God, that you can go to the book of Kings, um, and I will find it shortly, I believe. I can, it's not coming to mind. I believe it may be First Kings, where the prophet Elijah goes on Mount Carmel, and there's a demonstration uh, yes. between the false prophets of Baal. Understand and know that the antics and what they're doing uh, will no longer be uh, looked at as, 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 as the work of God or as the prophetic. Um, you don't have to be like uh, exposure is going to come. The way that exposure is going to come is God is causing the real prophets to arise, which is going to make the false prophets stand out. And they're going to do yes. all these antics until, like Elijah said, enough, enough, enough. They were cutting themselves, blood gushing out. He says, enough, 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 and begin to laugh and say, this is over. I call down fire. I, <laughs> I, I, I literally pour uh, buckets of water. I literally saturate water on this wood, and I call down fire from heaven by the true and one and only living God. And when this happens, the Lord people come out of the curse and out of the spell of Baal, and they begin to bow from the true demonstration of God, saying, yes. God yes. Almighty, one of heaven yes. and earth, is one and only true God. And that Lord is the demonstration God. that is about Lord to happen. So don't worry. Hallelujah. You can call in a true God is going to bring uh, to you, uh, the true prophets of God, I'm speaking to the leaders and the pastors, where you will say, it's okay, I'm going to bring them in as a special forces team to begin to equip my church and my people for this time that we're about to uh, walk into. And then Bless the Lord is, is also going to prophetically release to the leaders as well um, the strategies behind closed doors and help them in some personal places in their lives so that they can be prepared. God is building up, and I hear the Lord saying, a strong church. Uh, we are a fortified, a fortified city now, uh, as of today, as of right now. And so um, as this, the word of the Lord is being released, so it is being established. And Praise so uh, now you will hear this uh, coming out of the mouths of all of his prophets. This will be, you'll hear confirmation everywhere from this day forth. And you'll say, I heard that, and we were on the line, and, and the prophet began to speak. Um, it is not my words, it's the word of the Lord, so we need to give God glory. We need yes. to glorify our God because right now I'm decreasing uh, because just as a vessel, the Lord is speaking uh, to us, us, us today. Yes. He's Thank speaking you, to us in such a profound Thank way you, that we can Thank now you. really hear him. You Thank can you, hear him today. God. You've been praying Hallelujah. and you've been believing God, but even your prayers are going to shift after today because you're going to recognize that what you've been praying for is not necessarily the will of God. 
praying for these things and praying for what it is you want to happen. And, you know, everybody's kind of doing the same thing. If you look on the media circuit, everybody's doing the same thing. We have not met our mark just by getting to television. Television is not the highest place. The highest place is in the secret place of the most high. That is the highest place. He says, go rest. I love this, the NIV, where it says, we'll rest in the shadow of the Almighty God. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress, my God, my my God God in whom I trust. I trust. And so that is what it is today. Um, So God says there's going to be a stop and a halt in some of the work that many are doing because now He's gonna. You're gonna allow God to send you where you need to go. Jesus sent out his disciples. He gave them instruction before they went and said, "You don't need what you think you need." Thank you, Jesus. I'm gonna make it to where you're gonna understand and know how I take care of you. Thank you, Jesus. And how how when I send you, everything is prepared already. So don't take all these things so that you don't begin to depend on what you think you need yourself. Um, I hear the Lord saying, "Pack light." Um, that a lot of people are about to start getting rid of old things, get rid of old things and begin to give to the needy. Um, I did something not too long ago. I did a house sale because God showed me I was about to be on the move. See, although things are happening in our lives right now and we see certain things take place and it looks like there's a rumble in the spirit and things don't look so good, trust and believe that God has to uproot those things out. He has to cut off the old. He has to do this. Um, you have to prune something for the new to come up. And so you have to get rid of it. It has to be a season where things die. That's why winter comes, and it buries the seed into the ground. Um, It it begins to cause everything to freeze up, and it looks like things are dying. The trees and the leaves wither up in certain places, and it's cold, and it's bitter. It's brisk. But right after that comes the season of spring where everything sprouts. The Lord says you must understand your seasons and your times according to the book of of, um, Ecclesiastes where it talks about the times and the season, a time to, a time to plant, a time to uproot, a time to live, a time to die. Uh, There's a generation that is about to leave us, so get prepared. Love on grandmother, but she, her time. Love on grandfather, because their time, uh, the changing of the guard must happen in so many different facets and in so many different ways. We're rounding up here. Uh, And so understand that uh, love on grandmother and rejoice because it's a home going. Love on mother because it's a home going. Uh, let her let her live in the true place that God wants her to live. Let him, whomever God is speaking to, so he's about to prepare your heart and let a settling come upon your spirit, removing the fear of death. That was where I went wrong as a young girl because I did not understand death. I had the fear of it, the fear of loss. And and the loss and the void of my father But God replaced that void I want to talk to the fatherless today And those that are struggling That do not have the mother or father around uh, You right now Uh, You have to understand that God is trying He's trying, let him in He says I want to replace that void, and I want to be your Jesus. father. I want to yes. be your mother. Jesus, yes. when the physical mother comes to the scene, they said, Jesus, your mother and brother is here. But he said, but who is my mother? Who is my brother? Except those who do the will of my father. Things have taken a turn. It's been a real turnaround. It's been a, a true time where things have taken a true shape and form that is Bless all kingdom, all kingdom. And so he's, he Bless is changing our Lord. status. He's changing our status into the true uh, kingdom citizens and the people of God and holding his hand. So he's saying, rest in me. Uh, Know that I'm filling the void. I am your father. I am your father. I am the one that healeth thee. I am the one. If you want to say, in every area I hear the Lord saying, I am the one, because he says, I am that I am. That means that there is nothing else. It's a final, definite statement. I am that I am. Period. There is nothing else. So I love how Psalm 91 and 3, where he uses words like, I'm going to go down the line of the verses, and I want you to say, I want you to hear me as I close out. Um, It begins from the first verse, starting with the first words of each verse. Whomever, second verse, I will. Third verse, surely. Fourth verse, he will. Fifth verse, you will. Sixth verse, nor the pestilence. Seventh verse, a thousand may fall. Uh, Eighth verse, you will only. Uh, Ninth verse, if you say. Tenth verse, no harm will. Eleventh verse, for he will. Uh, The twelfth verse says, they will lift. Uh, Thirteenth verse, you will tread. 
14th verse, because he loves me. 15th verse, he will call on me. 16th verse, with long life. Those are just the beginning words, three words, one word of each beginning of that verse of 91st Psalm. Those are definite guarantees. I will, he will, you will. Those are all guarantees. Glory to God. You hear the Lord saying, I will. I will, I will. The Lord has guaranteed to the people in the body of Christ today that the word of the Lord that he has released concerning us, it is true, and he will complete it. He will complete it for the Lord says, he he who has begun a good work on the inside of you shall complete it until the day of Jesus Christ. There's a completing and a perfecting process going on within you as an individual and the church and the body of Christ as his people and as the saints of God. All right, so let the mantle of prayer now be upon all of you, and God bless you. I thank you so much for the support of the ministry, for having me as a guest today. I've enjoyed my time. We've been in the presence of the Lord. I love all of you, and I look forward to connecting more. Praise God. I'm going to sound the victory, sound of the shofar as we go off the air. Hallelujah, with a shout of joy. Thank you so much, Sister Tori. God bless you. you. And God bless you, listeners. Amen. Mm -hmm. Goodbye.